I'm Curtis Shea. The time right now is 9 o'clock. We continue our team coverage on the search for a missing 10-month-old baby. Kansas City Police, they are going to be giving a news conference, uh, hopefully to update us on the latest. But here's what we know so far. The child is still missing. We are entering day two. An Amber Alert was reported early yesterday morning. It looks like police are talking right now, so let's go to the news conference. The house and the parents do. Uh, they were cooperative with us all day yesterday and into yesterday evening as well. Uh, they in, were interviewed all the way up until 10 30 or 11 last night and they were cooperative but then you know it'd been a long day for everybody and the interviews ended about that time uh, we're working on that um, right now our detectives are still in contact with them uh, I've let them know that obviously that's the next step everybody everybody would like to hear from them and we're, we're trying to make that happen Steve, there's still some confusion about forced entry into the house can you clarify the window playing effect? well the window was a big part yesterday morning um, you know, I don't know what conclusions they've drawn from that, but uh, like I said, the only thing that we know absolutely is that there should have been a 10-month-old in that house, and there isn't, and we're doing everything we can to find that child. Are you questioning any other family members other than the people that live in that house? Uh, I know we've interviewed other people. Uh, you know, that morning, several members of the family came from, uh, you know, other places, extended family, and we've talked to about everybody that we can. Okay, yeah, we did cancel the Amber Alert after about 12 hours. That's just kind of a matter of routine. An Amber Alert is for an immediate sense of urgency. Um, after about 12 hours, it's kind of used up its effectiveness. However, that doesn't change anything that we're doing at all. Well, I would say people should be as careful as they always should be. You know, we haven't developed any hard suspect information, but uh, people should do what they should always be doing. You say the parents left at 10.30 last night from police headquarters. Are they expecting that? You know, certainly our detectives know how to reach them. I'm sure they're going to contact them again today, but uh, what the next step is, I don't know. I just know that the formal statements ended yesterday at around 10.30. Steve, you mentioned uh, something about a public statement. Are, you, are police encouraging them to make a public statement with the couple and have you found that that's helpful in cases like this in the past? Well, we, uh, our detectives are also talking to somebody from the uh, National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Um, they're talking to that person right now to try to figure out what the next best step is. Um, we know that it would probably be beneficial for the family to talk. However, uh, they cooperated with us yesterday, but they were never in our custody. They are free to do whatever they would like, and if, if they're not comfortable doing that, we certainly can't compel them to do it. So after the missing and exploited children folks talk to them, will you then determine whether you're going to encourage them to make a statement? Well, I, I think that would be up to them. I don't know if, uh, if our detectives have gotten that far in it yet. The morning's young, but uh, we'll, we'll certainly hopefully be able to give you a better answer probably this afternoon. I know yesterday uh, you were talking about an area you were searching. You couldn't tell why you had been directed to that area. Can you tell us more about that today? Uh, which area are you talking about? Any of the areas you were searching yesterday, did anything lead you to particular parts of town you were looking? No, not necessarily. Everything that we searched yesterday on foot was just because it made sense to search that. If you've seen an aerial photo of the area, there's a large wooded area to the south and to the east of the uh, address and a large industrial uh, industrial area that kind of blocks off the western side of that. Um, we did knock and talks through the industrial area. We did knock and talks through the apartment buildings and all the neighborhood around. And then, as you know, we had officers sweep all the way through that wooded area and we're having dogs go through there again probably I think for like the second or third time. Um, we're also going back to all the houses and apartment uh, that, that we knocked on yesterday where there was no answer to make sure that we've absolutely covered every door possible. So how many crews on foot today searching the area? Well like I said we have 30 or 40 people here right now that are uh, being farmed out to handle all the leads that are coming in and probably another 50 or better to uh, ramp it up just like it was yesterday if it needs to go that route. So federal agencies are still involved? Federal agencies are still involved as well. That's right. Any kind of different leads coming in today? No, we're still getting some, but none are really leading to uh, um, you know anything hard that we can send out and really get good work from. Any descriptions? Anything at all? Nothing. Cars, any vehicles? No. I wish there were, but right now there isn't. Now explain. Did you talk about uh, parents being in but they're not considered suspects. They're not in custody. No. Are they ruled out, or can we even say that? Uh, you know, uh, they were cooperative, uh, but at this point we have next to nothing to go on and we're not ruling anything out but but they've been cooperative a lot of people have reached out wanting to know what it is that they can do help. sure Where are you, going to? you know the best thing really is just if, if you think you saw something to call the tips hotline um, and honestly to have 
a massive amount of citizens combing the woods where we are and that kind of thing, really that would not help. Uh, if we're, if we're combing an area and we come upon something that could be a crime scene and we have 50 people from the community that we can't account for, you know, we have to maintain the integrity of the crime scene. Right now our manpower is adequate based on what we know, so uh, we really wouldn't encourage that at all, just to, just to call the TIPS hotline if you know something. And the command, the command center here, is there a reason it's so far away from the neighborhood? Uh, you know, a command post takes a certain size. It's just the, the closest location that we could find that would work for what we needed. Uh, the location of the command post isn't based upon any information that we have. And we also have no plans on shutting it down right now. We still have leads coming in, and we're going to keep working. Now, are you going to go over the same areas today that you did yesterday, or do you have a whole new grid? Well, we haven't uh, expanded or discovered a new area that we really need to uh, put boots on the ground in. But like I said, we're going back and knocking on all the doors that we didn't get an answer from yesterday. And we're sending dogs through the woods again for probably the second or third time just because we can. Do you anticipate that you guys will go again until sunset like you did last night and then let the dogs continue after that? Uh, hard to say, but well, like I said, we don't have any plans to shut down the operation right now at all. And did the dogs hit on anything that directed you this morning? No, no. we didn't get any information from that yet. Okay, thank you. And that was a news conference by the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department just giving us the latest on their search. They ultimately are saying that the parents are cooperating with this. They're saying that they interviewed family members. Uh, what this is all about, once again, is that 10-month-old Lisa Irwin, she's been missing since sometime early Tuesday morning from her house in the 3600 block of North Lister. She was last seen sleeping in her crib at about 1030 Monday night. And then around 4 a.m. is when her parents discovered her missing. Lisa has blonde hair, blue eyes, she weighs about 30 pounds. She has her two bottom teeth, a small bug bite under her left ear, as well as a beauty mark that is on her right thigh. Currently, she has a cold and she has a cough. We'll bring you the latest as soon as we get it, but uh, in that news conference, once again, they interviewed family members, parents are cooperating, the search continues, they're going to look at certain areas, they're going to send their dogs in again, they're going to send more officers to search the vicinity around the house. Yesterday, they searched the nearby woods west and south of the property. They were rappelling down an embankment. They're looking all over to try to find this little girl. We'll have so much more. You can also go to our website, NBCActionNews.com, any time of the day.